Hello and welcome to Outside the Frame, where we're talking about Goosebumps, Goosebumps. this week. And we're not talking about the movies, we're talking about the TV show. I grew up with Goosebumps. Yeah, me too. I loved Goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, this was on Fox Kids, which does not exist much anymore. I'm sure that turned into like, uh, what was it? Probably like uh, I, I don't know. CW, whatever CW's Saturday lineup is now. Uh, but this, 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 just this mm -hmm. promo and the music itself takes me back. Oh yeah, I mean, between Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps, like, those were the two children, like, scary shows out at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, this one, Goosebumps started, uh, 1995. Really? It came out. Yeah, 1995. That does not, that means it was around because I was three when that came out in 1995, so, like... That means it was in syndication and just kept on going by the time I started watching it and started, like, grabbing it in my subconscious and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty amazing. But, oh, man, there's so many good episodes of this. Yeah, this right here, the mask that just stays on her face. I remember that. I remember when Burger King and all this always had those, uh, had the Goosebumps toys and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I remember having the little hamster that you could put inside out and, like, he like had his like teeth and whatnot, and it was like a normal hamster. Then you flipped them inside out, and then he was all green and had like mutated stuff and whatnot. Uh, Ryan Gosling, hey, Ryan which Gosling. is in First Man this weekend. So, Interesting. yeah, Goosebumps and Ryan Gosling are all tethered. Say cheese and die. Was Say cheese one? and die. That was episode four. Yeah, but like I said, this was a fantastic show. You know, I had. Like, almost all of the Goosebump books growing up. Like, I had stacks upon stacks of Goosebump books. I think I probably only read, like, five of them. I, <laughs> no, but and they're so small, I too. All, they're yeah. so thin. I, <laughs> um, I always wanted to read the Goosebumps. I just never did. Mm -hmm. I really wish I, I would have, realistically. But now I sit back yeah. and I don't want to watch the read them now. Well, what what I liked about the Goosebump books is they started doing multiple endings or like you could pick your ending. So really? you, would, you you would read a couple pages and then it would give you a choice like would you do this or that and whatever you pick it would tell you to turn to a certain page. I think it was like the Doomsday Clock or Clock of Doom I think is one of them. I think I remember hearing people talk about that. Yeah. There's um there's a podcast out there called Teen Creeps. And these mm -hmm. two women read like adult, young adult uh, horror novels, and normally they're terrible. They've done a couple of R.L. Stein ones, mm -hmm. but R.L. Stein is not their favorite. But they've done a couple of them, and I think what, that was one of the episodes. So give them a uh, listen if you nice. want to be in the mood for Halloween podcast oh, did you, talk. Did you see that the dude with the the monster with the crazy eyes that come out? Yeah, he would eat spiders. I think in that episode. I don't know. Right? I haven't seen Goosebumps in forever. Dude, I know this is bringing it back though. Back, back in college, I would torrent so much, and I actually torrented Men in Black. Men in Black. I actually torrented every single Goosebumps episode, and watched a couple mm -hmm. of them. Now Hulu has the collection of Goosebumps. Oh, I don't know if, it does. It has all of them. I don't know if it's all of them uh -huh. or a select few, but I'm sure there's a ton of episodes. Uh, I don't know how many episodes there actually are. Look at these promos, though. They're like, they're <laughs> they're <laughs> classic. They're old for sure. Dude, this is a really good quality one. Uh, that one's creepy looking. <laughs> now, some some of the Goosebumps ones were like actually creepy. Like mm. if you were. A little kid watching these, it would scare you out of your mind for sure. Now, now I will say mm -hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, demon baby. So if I didn't want kids before, I definitely don't want kids now. <laughs> um, so I want to say right now, I you shouldn't really compare them, but just because they were out around the same time and mm -hmm. basically the only two horror things out there as kids was. I thought Are You Afraid of the Dark was more of the scare tactic, where Goosebumps was more of the have fun, make you think kind of thing. Like, if I had yeah. to put the two together, I thought Are You Afraid of the Dark was really trying to scare me, where Goosebumps was just like a fun little thing, like turning into a pig kind of thing. Yeah, that that, that's true, but look, looking at the <laughs> effects now, that that's pretty creepy, man. Look at that pig. Oh, my uh, gosh. And then that was not... But, like, 
I never walked out of a Goosebumps from watching a Goosebumps going like, I'm really scared now, Mm -hmm. kind of thing. There was one Goosebumps episode that did freak me out a lot, and it was one where, like, the a monster was invisible, Uh but it was always in water. Like it would travel through the water and then try to kill the kids or get the kids in the water. Um, and then they had to throw, they had to get him in the water and then throw a whole bunch of electronics in there to like shock him or whatever. Mm. Can't remember the episode. I really wish I could remember. That was, that was bad. <laughs> Some of these remind me of like yeah. Stephen King, like Lang Lanier's kind of movies that were just horrific. Ooh. Yeah, the outfits and everything. But I think the fun quality that the Goosebumps... Oh my gosh. That the the Goosebumps TV shows had, they're definitely translating that to the movies now. Mm-hmm. Uh, just you have better special effects. But but to me, I watched the first one and I wasn't scared at all or anything. Like, with these, mm-hmm. it was actually a story. Right. Well, to your, to your point, to your point, it wasn't... They're not meant to be scary. But they're, ch- they're children's books. True, but as a, I was I didn't even get that nostalgia feel even when watching it. I was just like, oh, this is just mm-hmm. a movie promoting all the books that he did at one point yeah. and all the different uh, characters that I could go read about. But they didn't showcase like, oh, this is really like some mm-hmm. of these made me think, and the movie did not want to do that at all. Right. Right. Yeah. I. Well, they were trying to make it, I don't know, more relevant. I don't know, trying to cram a lot into one movie. Mm-hmm. So uh, these different episodes over time, you could really dive into each book. So that's right. why you probably uh, was able to, to think about things or to get into the story a little bit more. Because it wasn't just one movie. It was multiple episodes. I just thought it was like a cash grab, almost. Mm -hmm. Like, it just felt like more of like a, hey, look at all your favorite characters. Like, we couldn't pick one character to be in the movie, so we picked all of them. Right, like, you you kind of, so like, they could have just made um, Night of the Living Dummy into a Mm -hmm. movie. Like, they could have just picked a book. And there's a couple of parts, isn't it? Like, it's more than... Oh, there's a, there's a lot of... Of the Living Living Dummy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I mean... I granted, I think Slappy is definitely the main one you want to highlight, mm-hmm. but I wish they would have just narrowed it down to one, one concise villain, and then oh, moved to Cartoon Network. Oh, uh, really then, nice. Here we go. Uh, but I thought they could they could have done one concise villain. Mm-hmm. I will say Slappy looks way better than what I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, there. Well, Ooh. in the first book, Slappy had. Uh, another there's another dummy uh, named Woody or something not Woody like Toy Story it was something like that I don't know Mr. Woods mm. I don't know something like that but he ended up killing him <laughs> it's true it's true now oh, yeah. there's one episode that I always think about and there was one Goosebumps episode where there was an alternate alternate dimension uh-huh. where it showed the girl she got up she drank orange juice like, the mom came up and was like, you can have orange juice or or cranberry juice. And mm-hmm. she picked orange juice, and that sent her day in a tailspin, and everything went bad for her. And then the one, it was like a split screen, and then she picked cranberry juice, and her day was like the best day ever. And ever since I saw that episode, I would always, like, randomly be like, oh, if I would have just had cranberry juice today, maybe my, my day, day would have been, been better. so better. <laughs> and, like... I don't know. It just made me think of that. So I just looked it up. Night of the Living Dead. Slappy kills Mr. Wood by crushing him with a steamroller. <laughs> That's what it said. That is horrific. <laughs> That's what it said. Gee, uh, they could have done a super scary movie about that. That would have been awesome. That's like the Hulk meeting the other Hulk and fighting each other. But... What was your favorite Goosebumps TV episode or book? Yeah, leave it know. leave it in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, but that's it from us for Outside the Frame. That's right. Uh, if you want to see, if you want to, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see our main episode for this week, click right over here. And if you want to see us in our top five, our top ten, top ten, yes. go right here. Right there, click right. I there. can't even speak anymore because yes. I'm so scared of these promos. That's right. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.
Peace.